So here's something most tick classes won't tell you. Beware of uniform temperature environments. You're like, what in the world is that? Pretty simple. Fire on the Charlie side of the house, three rooms away. You open the front door, you see nothing. All gray, hard to tell anything. What does that mean? Well, if the fire has been sealed up and the fire is trying to move from hot to cold, as it goes from the fire room to the next room, it cuts the temperature in half. As it goes from that room to the next room, as far as the gases goes, it cuts the temperature in half again. So now your front room where you make entry is 200 degrees floor to ceiling. And you say, well, that's not that hot. It's not that good either, because what it does, if you have no contrast or no temperature difference, your camera is blind. I hear more firefighters say the camera whited out on me. It didn't. I'll tell you why. So your camera has a very, very good thermal sensitivity rating, which allows it to see very well. But if you don't have contrast, you're in trouble. Look at the two pictures here. This is your camera on the bottom and an older bullet on the top. The difference is one has image enhancement, one doesn't, difference in their programming. But if you have a uniform temperature, I've heard firefighters say it whited out. It's more like it washed out. The human eye can only see so many shades of gray. So if we stop and stay low and slow down and keep it in high sensitivity and then use water to create contrast because water is cooler, it will make Areas we spray with water, a different temperature, and the camera will focus and give us better detail. That's just one little trick to help you see better. This is my department doing a hoarding drill using fake smoke, trying to find a heated mannequin. The problem here is when you look at my firefighters, they're white hot. They are not the hottest thing in the room despite how many calendars they think they've been in. The problem is that they are the hottest thing according to the camera. See the smoke machine? It's hot but fake smoke is cold. This room is cold. When I stand up and look to the left over these pallets they set up to make pathways like a hoarding environment, you will see something show up in the far left-hand corner. That is a heated mannequin, child mannequin. What's the problem with this? The victim is not always gonna show up white hot, okay? They need to understand the context determines how the victim will show up. If the lens gets occluded with moisture, or dirt, you will see next to nothing. And you will hear firefighters say, the camera whited out. Nope, new cameras do not white out. You will see nothing because it can't see through moisture. New cameras saturate, which means if there's a drastic amount of heat over 1100 degrees, your whole screen will go red. And then you'll see that uh, little over temperature warning show up in the top center of the screen flashing. So I know none of you have ever come to work and somebody's left a mess for you to clean up. This is a friend of mine, Captain Jim Moss. He was kind enough to share this photo. He showed what the tick looked like after a fire and what it should look like when we're done. The reason, another reason you need to see this is NFPA 1408 says that you should be trained on how to care and maintain your camera. You want to wash it with soap and water and clean that lens with an alcohol wipe. That's it. Not solvents, not purple stuff or degreaser. Number two, if you lay a dirty camera in a dirty charger, you will not have a good contact and that battery will not charge efficiently even though you have a sealed battery in yours and it charges wirelessly. Anything that interferes with that will cause problems. Now, this is a comparison and this is another example of why you don't wanna stand up. This is a 12 by 12 room research burn done at WVU. Two cameras, your camera is on the right, the top, Upper right hand corner is a GoPro view. They have a 12 by 20 rectangle window, observation window cut up high in this box. They're going to stick both cameras into the exhaust. I want you to watch how quickly both the cameras will fog up or white out because of the moisture. But watch what happens when we wipe the lens too. Bullard will basically white out or wash out in about 30 seconds. The end of your camera is angled. It acts like a shelf. So it catches moisture and dirt very easily. See, we're away from it, still looks gray, but it doesn't look threatening. That's very hot in there, but we're blasting it with heat and moisture because moisture is a byproduct of smoke and, and the fire. So we're gonna pull both cameras out and we're gonna wipe both lenses here in a minute just with our gloved hand. We don't have an alcohol wipe or anything fancy. 
Notice the colorization shows up. <clears throat> we're able to see very well, but it quickly fogs back up. Why? Because we're sticking it in an exhaust. Most of them will not tell you this, but the germanium window, which is the front of your camera, it's made of a very thin piece of metal, is not meant to be exposed to greater than 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means we shouldn't be standing up and sticking it in an exhaust. Other limitations to the camera, they've told me a long time ago, ticks can't see through glass. Well, ticks can't see through anything except smoke, technically. Long wave infrared radiation travels through the smoke and the camera picks it up. When I'm looking at a double pane, newer, energy efficient window, I'm not gonna pick up the heat on the other side of it as much as heat that's being transferred in different ways. It is double pane and it's insulated with argon gas. When that gas starts to heat up and fail, it produces a cloudy effect on the, cam on the actual lens. The edges of the window, depending on if it's wood, metal, or vinyl, will heat up and transmit e energy. And if they use caulk or some type of flammable insulation, it will produce a thermal bridge. Ding, ding, ding. I don't have to see through it. I just have to know how heat transfers through it. Thermal bridge is a fancy word for conduction or heat loss in a structure. Engineers hate that term because they're trying to stop energy from being lost from your house or the building, so they make it more energy efficient. Now let's look at the contraindication of you can't see through glass. It depends more of what you're looking at than what you're looking through. The windows on the left are late 1800s, early 1900s glass. What's the difference between that and double paned newer glass? Older single pane glass, single pane, there you go, also had lead in it. And the reason we don't put single pane glass in newer homes is infrared energy travels straight through it and you lose your money. Literally your money is going straight out the window, which allows you though, as a firefighter, to see into that room if there's significant heat back there. Newer glass, if you had had the misfortune of buying new windows lately, you notice on the sticker it says low E window. That is not low energy, that is low emissivity, which means high reflectivity. If you don't believe me, why don't you Google a couple things next time I'm sitting on the toilet playing Candy Crush. Look up the Scorchy Tower in the UK. They built a 20 story high rise out of low E glass in a curvature formation without taking into account how the sun hits it. After the first week of it opening, it was giving people second degree burns as they walked by. People who parked their cars in the wrong part where the sun hit the building, it melted the bumpers off of Porsches. The sun is the largest emitter of infrared radiation in our solar system. When you magnify it, it gets stronger. You can also look up uh, Google homes burning down due to low E glass reflection. There are homes in the Midwest where the sun hits one window on this house and burns the non-flammable siding off the house next to it. It's gonna be something that has to be dealt with here in the near future. Those of you who'd like the vent inner search tactic, very effective tactic for getting to our victims quicker. This helps you because in this case, single pane glass, I can tell if the door is open or closed to this room after I've done my 360. Only two of the rooms show up with heat signatures. The rest of them are dark. Those rooms have the door closed or isolated from the fire. This room and the, the Alpha Delta corner of the building is showing heat signatures, which tells me the door is open. That helps me when I'm about to take that glass. So I know I have very little time to go get that door. Here's your tick limitation slides. Everybody wants to know the Cliff Notes version. Your camera doesn't see through anything. Remember, it's picking up surface temperature, surface temperature measurements, and it's getting the radiation and convection currents coming off of it. Glass or shiny objects reflect in infrared energy. energy. Well insulated objects such as LEED or green certified homes will hide heat signatures very well. Kids under blankets, grandparents or people under very thick blankets, you may not see them with a tick. You will see the bed, which tells you to tell your firefighter to go lay hands on it. Is your camera intrinsically safe? Most are not. If you have the NXT, it is an intrinsically safe NFPA 1801 certified camera because that's one of the portions of that uh, consensus standard is it cannot be an ignition source. The biggest limitation with ticks is this, user error. Misinterpretation, scanning too fast, reading the spot temperature, various things such as that. Uh, seeing firefighters scan, look like they're doing a, a or conducting an orchestra. 
you scan that fast or take your cell phone and try to take a picture that fast, you don't get a good picture. It's a thermal imaging camera. I hear people all the time, it's not a camera. Yes, it is. It is taking a picture and producing an image based on infrared data, not visual light. So it's just a different type of camera. Oversaturation, which is basically what people used to call whiteout. The camera saturates, goes all red, and then you don't see anything. Now, if your camera does white out, it means it has moisture on the lens. You simply wipe the lens, point it down and raise it back up, but make sure you're low and not in the actual exhaust. Older cameras had an inability to view objects behind flames. Your camera has image enhancement, which actually adds detail and the colorization is translucent, which allows you to see things that you couldn't see before. And also reflections can be very troublesome. If you notice here, the two firefighters through the door, you see to the left of that firefighter closest to the door, his or her reflection in the wall. <clears throat> also pay attention for when we talk about this in class, notice their bottles are dark. That's very important for you if you're looking for a down firefighter to understand that a dark bottle means they're breathing. So as we close, I want you to discuss several things with your firefighters. One, most of all, how are you gonna use this? How are you gonna tell other firefighters how to understand and interpret this. We're gonna give lesson plans to your department on how to show this information and share it. But this is a, a little gee whiz question to leave you and ponder this. This is a two inch gas line, two and a half feet underground. It's 110 degrees outside. I'm happen to be walking back as the incident commander and I see there's a pipe sticking out of the ground where the cable company was boring to put uh, fiber optics cables underground when they hit this line. Why is there a dark or cold V pattern on the ground where the gas is leaking? Think about it. It's 110 degrees. What temperature is the gas pumped at? And how does that affect the dirt? I'm not seeing the gas leaking. I'm seeing something else. Just because we can't see certain things doesn't mean we can't see the effects of that. <clears throat>